Today we see God's strategy being employed in Poi Pet, Cambodia through our son in the faith, Joel Reimer, and we're seeing some tremendous deliverance come into these people. The key, discipleship. When you look at a nation like Cambodia, the question that comes up in our hearts is, how is God gonna save this place? What can God do in here to make a real, living, lasting change? In a nation that's so destitute and so oppressed because of the genocide and the things that have happened there in the past, God indeed has a national call on a nation like Cambodia, just as he does every other nation. And so when we can connect by preaching the gospel, sharing the good news, you know, a real upbeat, positive message of what God wants to do in this nation and people get a hold of it, it doesn't matter what kind of oppression and disappointment, discouragement that they've been under over the last generations. We're seeing a new generation rise up with a hope and a positive attitude in their hearts, you know, a real positive faith. And this is the disciples that Jesus wants us to make. Every man, woman, and child everywhere in the world responds powerfully to the idea that God has called you, He's created you for a purpose. And if you can connect to that purpose, you can find the fulfillment and the significance that will make you just, you know, life is worth living once again. And we're seeing life worth living once again coming into this nation of Cambodia. The way to build God's kingdom in any nation is through true discipleship. Reaching the people, teaching them to follow Christ, and mobilizing them to reach the lost are biblical patterns of a true disciple. The basic purpose of our Victory Churches is to reach every available person at every available time by every available means with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Joel Reimer, one of our sons in the faith, has been running with this vision in Cambodia for the past five years. Joel has taken the gifts and talents God has given him and has used them as tools to reach out to people in the border town of Poi Pet, Cambodia. Some of Joel's most committed leaders came to Christ through Joel's English classes as he taught English from the Bible to casino workers and slum dwellers alike. Others learned about Jesus as Joel used worship songs to teach them the guitar. And in a nation where children are exploited, Joel puts much value on the orphaned, neglected, and abandoned children of Poipet. They flock to Joel's meetings, and many are making decisions to follow Christ. Joel is so eager to reach people where they're at, you know? Yeah. For those that want to study and improve their English, he has free English classes. For those that are interested in music, he teaches guitar. For those that like to play, you know, guitar, then he just spends time with them. For those that are interested in other things, he just takes the time and the opportunity to discover what's important to the people that he's trying to, to reach, yeah. the people that he's trying to disciple, and he takes time to give them an opportunity to build relationship with him through those areas of interest, those avenues of interest. That's right. You know, and so it's neat to see, you know, people that have had issues with, you know, like for those that are struggling with diseases and stuff like that. Joel has taken the time to minister to them, to pray for them, you know, and as they've seen his true care and his concern, then their hearts are now open to what is interesting to Joel, you know, and so now they're beginning to ask questions, you know, about Christianity and about God, and, and I just find it so amazing how willing he is to do anything and everything just to reach people. This one guy that I have currently working with me, his name is Candy, and he's a 21-year-old, 22-year-old Cambodian guy. My name is uh, Paul Candy. I'm a Cambodian. Um, right now I'm 21 years old. 
and, uh, and I got to know him through our whole English school program. Uh, back in my old building, I taught English, and I still do currently, but anyways, I met him at my old place, and his house happened to be very near my old building. Yeah, the first time I can tell you that uh, uh, I just came to learn English with Pastor Joe two year, two, uh, last two years, and then uh, I, he told me about the Jesus guy, and then uh, I wonder that uh, who is Jesus guy about that. And uh, so I began, so I began inviting him to our church, and I began inviting him to come to our home churches with us. And so he'd come to our home churches, and he would volunteer. And uh, so right away, I, I saw that he was uh, that he was hungry, you know, to do something for God. Okay, so I think that God is good, so I desire to accept God. And uh, so eventually, uh, I gave him a Bible and I gave him some some tracks. And, uh, and then he went with a, a different pastor friend of his uh, to a conference and I think that's where he actually got born again and that's where he got baptized. But then he came back and he was really hungry to help us out more. Uh, so he volunteered with us for a, good, for a good two years and now he's currently part of our staff. And I put him on our staff because, uh, you know, he showed that he was hungry, uh, he showed that he did have a good heart. And, uh, and also he was, he was very teachable, even, even back then he was very teachable. And he's worked with me now for a good, uh, probably four or five months. Uh, right now, uh, I work in the Victory Church in Poipet with Pastor Joe. He's my pastor. And, and honestly, uh, I've had quite a few problems with him, even though I thought he was the golden boy. Uh, again, he's, he's a brand new Christian. He's a baby Christian. He doesn't know the Word of God that well and so there's all these gray areas in his life that I've had to work uh, work 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 through uh, with him but again he's very teachable and very humble so every time that I've ever had to get on him about doing something wrong he's always very quick to ask for forgiveness and then he's always, he always wants to change and he doesn't always change right away but many of us don't change right away whenever God corrects us either uh, so, so he's one guy uh, that I've kind of poured my life into over the last, I'd say, three years or so. Uh, because right away I saw that he had a good heart and he wasn't doing things for money. Another thing I really noticed in Cambodia is the amount of kids at the conference. There were kids everywhere. The children's ministry was like half the congregation. Kids coming from everywhere and they're all scruffy and dirty, but I mean, they're just having a great time learning about Jesus and his and uh, Joel's little friends helping him out there. They were uh, teaching him, basically having little relay races and, and a little bit of teaching. Obviously, the language barrier was there, but it still there's lots of kids there. You know, you just want to scoop them up, and but that's really where it's at. Sometimes it's just like it seems to be the majority of the people there that are willing are the kids. They're everywhere, and sometimes their parents can't be found, and sometimes their parents are working or pushing carts back and forth between Thailand and Cambodia and they can't go to school. So, I mean, you can pull these kids in and raise them up. So, I mean, it's just a tremendous opportunity for, for people to come and minister to these kids, you know? It's just really encouraging to see how much value that Joel places on ministering to kids in Cambodia because it's obviously something that's on God's heart. God really values these children, you know, and these are the kids that are gonna face, uh, you know, shape the future and the destiny of Cambodia. And these kids, they just soak up the love that they get. And I'm so thankful that there is a place in Pet, Cambodia that these kids can go to at any time. I mean, the church is open to these children anytime. you know. As soon as the doors are unlocked, there's usually some kids in there. And uh, that there is a place that they can go just for, you know, real love and just healthy affection and a place where they feel like they're valued and cared for. They sense God's love through the ministry that Joel's doing. They sense that they are valued that they're loved, that they're desired, that they, you know, have a purpose and uh, that God wants to do something in their lives. And so it's just, it's, it's such a beacon of hope that there's some place that they can go where they're told that they're special, that they're valuable, that God created them for a purpose right. and that their life has purpose and, and great meaning yeah. and a future. Yeah, it's good. I think of anything, it's just like Paul said, imitate me as I imitate, imitate Christ, you know? We've got to be Christ to the world and how many people can really say, imitate me? as I imitate Christ, you know? That's the level of leaders and Christians we really need to be at. Imitate me as I imitate Christ because He wants people to be saved, amen? He wants leaders to be growing and, and, and reached out to, so.